What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm excited about today's show. Me too. I'm really excited about this <laughs> because we talk about LDN all the time. Low dose naltrexone, but we haven't done a deep dive. <laughs> deep dive. A deep dive. <laughs> <laughs> so, Robin, <laughs> explain LDN. All right. So, LDN, again, low dose naltrexone. So, to explain it, you got to go back to what naltrexone actually is and what it was originally developed for. Okay. Because if you just Google naltrexone, you're going to think I'm crazy for wanting to put you on it. <laughs> um, so, naltrexone was originally developed back in the 1980s and it was used for drug and alcohol addiction. Okay. Um, so, if you would take naltrexone, it blocked the receptors so patients wouldn't get the euphoric benefit of drugs or alcohol alcohol, so it helped with withdrawals. Um, but used through research over the years in a functional medicine environment, we have discovered that using really low doses can have in wonderful benefits um, for lots of inflammatory and autoimmune conditions is typically what I'm using it for. So why does the dose matter? Like if it's the same medication, same drug, what, and, but the dose has a different yeah. effect. So using it in really low doses, it is binding to your um, endorphin receptors in the body. Okay. So with high doses, 50 to 100 milligrams is what it was originally used in. It would bind and completely block those receptors. So okay. nothing else could get there. Using it in really low doses, it's binding temporarily to those receptor sites, but it's triggering them. And so then when it releases from there, it triggers your body to release its own natural endorphins. Oh. So the binding helps with pain relief endorphin. Um, endorphin are your happy hormones. Um, but that release that you don't get with higher doses, you only get that with the lower doses, that's triggering your body to pump out your own natural endorphins. So it's like a stimulant to mm -hmm. a degree. What, what are people, what are you mostly putting people on this for? <laughs> Lots of, again, it's one of those things that is just so good for so oh, no. many people, which is oh, why no. I love it. Um, inflammation, autoimmune, which is just about everybody that's out there. Right. So the patients that really come to mind when I think about LDN are um, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, lupus, MS. Um, I use it a lot for Hashimoto's patients. Okay. Um, Crohn's. IBS. Um, it can help with depression, with anxiety, um, chronic pain, PCOS. Um, there's even been some research in using it for fertility patients. Oh. I've seen really good results with it for um, endometriosis patients, um, just fibromyalgia, literally anything that causes pain or inflammation, LDN can help. My, my assumption, and this could be a completely <laughs> stupid statement, but it's off-label? We are using it off-label. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, I'm imagining because naltrexone is the the main one, right? And then you've got low dose naltrexone, so LDN would be off-label, right. For the way that you're using it, correct? Which okay. is the way we use a lot of medications right. out there, right? Um, so LDN is a compounded medication; doesn't come from a normal pharmacy because we're starting with super low doses, okay? Like one to one and a half milligrams and is you the, said the starting dose. Normal would be 50? 50 to a hundred. Okay. okay. So we're using like micro doses, okay? Um, and then we increase dose slowly, you know, up to two, two and a half, three. It typically Typically, I see good results around the 3 to 4.5 mark. Okay. There has been research using it up to like 16 milligrams. I personally haven't had to go that high, but there are situations that, that it can. And you just titrate up? Mm -hmm. Slowly titrate up. Okay. Um, there's no narcotic effect out of this. Um, what, what does that mean? No. So it's it's not a narcotic medication. So not it's addictive. not a, it's not addictive. It's okay. not a controlled medication. It's not a pain pill. It's nothing like that. Okay. Um, it just has it's the chemical structure of LDN is so similar to your natural endorphins. Right. So you're getting the endorphin release from taking it, and then you're getting the endorphin release as it it takes it. Uh, clears the right. receptor sites. Um, very, very minimal side effects, if any. It's one of those medications I tell people either it's going to work or it's not, but it doesn't hurt to try it. Um, the endorphins uh, can tend to cause very vivid dreams. I typically tell people to take this at night. Um, vivid dreams, meaning you feel like you're running in your sleep all night, or maybe you dream in color. If it's enough that it disturbs sleep and people aren't able to sleep, then we switch it and dose it in the morning. Um, but typically it's taken before bedtime. 
and it's just a it's a compounded uh, pill. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. Okay, yep, just on an empty oral stomach. pill. Yeah, just in the evenings. Yeah, don't even have to be on an empty stomach necessarily. Really interesting. But I see it improve. Like I said, inflammation. So like with a Hashimoto's patient, inflammation is what drives the issue with the thyroid. Right. So we can bring down that inflammation. I see the antibody levels come down. I see their medication need come down. So sometimes we even have to adjust medications because of the benefit that we're getting out of this. So does somebody come off of LDN or is this going to be more of like a lifestyle type uh, it medication? Be, it can be a long-term thing. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. You can, it seems like people wouldn't want to get yeah, off of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we get good control of everything. Then why would we take it away? Right. Um, no, it tends to be more of a long-term thing. But again, um, like so RA patients, some of them can avoid taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, which can be really hard on the kidneys and stomach and instead can take LDN for their pain relief. So for, for your RA patients? For, Rheum- for the, rheumatoid Toyota arthritis patients, yeah. Okay. Um, so people are able to avoid having to take like Motrin and Tylenol all the time. Okay. They can avoid having to take opiate medications because some people have to be on pain yeah. pills for their pain relief. This can replace that. Uh, so it has a lot of really good benefits. And again, it's either it's either going to help or it's not. Um, usually we see benefit within the first couple of months on it. If we're seeing nothing, then hey, it's not right. one that's going to work for you. We'll try something else. Um, but a lot of patients, it makes a really big difference. Is there anybody that's, that absolutely should not be taking LDN? <clears throat> if you're on long-term narcotic use, okay, um, we we don't like to combine the two of those. Okay. Um, and it, side note, it's also used in some types of cancer. We don't necessarily get into that here, but there's a lot of research out there for different types of cancer patients as well. Super interesting. It can inhibit the growth of cells. Huh. So it's a really, really, really cool medication. LDN, guys. Low dose, naltrexone. Robin, thank you for explaining LDN. Absolutely. I appreciate you as always. Mm -hmm. Guys, thank you for joining us on this episode of Explain This. You name it, we explain it. We'll see you guys next time. Don't go away.